Hey everybody, we're gonna talk about this next assignment in Art Fundamentals called Value and Texture Scales. So this week we're gonna focus on the elements of art, value and texture, and then the design principles of repetition and pattern. So value, right up here, is the range of light to dark in any artwork, right, or anything. So above is an achromatic, or colorless, so not a chromatic, chroma, you know, chroma, chrome, chrome, you know, that, that's like a fancy word for color. So this is achromatic, so a non-color value scale from black to white. The top shows a blended one, and the bottom one shows a, uh, you know, a nine-step value scale right here. So value range in an artwork may be classified as full range, low key, high key, and mid value as shown below. So full range is all the way from dark to light. Low key is that kind of lower or the darker section. High key is the brighter section and then something in the middle or mid range, right? So let's talk a little bit about value here. Come on, there we go, make it big. Whoop. All right, pardon. So. Only through changes of light and dark can we perceive anything. I'm gonna hide this, sorry. Um, value is simply the artistic term for light and dark. So the big picture of this is this circle is the same value in all, all uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these squares, right? So the illustration above is a scale of seven you know, values of gray. These are called achromatic grays because they are mixes. They are mixes only of black and white, no color. The inner circles are the same. So that's kind of it's just like the, the visual trick that is the same throughout. So it kind of messes with your brain or your eyes a little bit. Value contrast, so high contrast, low contrast, refers to the relationship between areas of light and dark. So value pattern refers to the arrangement of amounts of variation of light and dark. Regardless of how colors are used, it's often described as high key or low key. This is very low key. So this is a lot of the lights, right? It's not super dark. This guy right here is kind of dark, but mostly this is a, a low key. Whereas this is high key, super high contrast, right? Darks and lights, hopefully you can see that. Low key, high key, and then, you know, what do you think that is? What do you think that is, Lola? You think that's high key or low key? You think that's high contrast or low contrast? I think it's high contrast too. It's got a lot of bright lights over here, you know, and it's got some super darks on the left. Um, so value as emphasis. So high dark and light contrast instantly attracts our attention because the value emphasis. By planning high contrast in one area, like this fish, you know, and subdued contrast elsewhere, like in the background, the artist can ensure where the viewer's eye will be directed. So my eye is really directed towards that fish, clearly because it's in the front, but also, and in the foreground, but also, you know, it's the brightest thing right in front of me. And I would say, you can think about it, but where are your eyes drawn to on this, on this drawing? I would say to the light, like if you just like look at this, you know, boom, I'm drawn to over here, you know, whereas if there was a bunch of light everywhere, I'd be looking everywhere, but my eye is instantly drawn to that area. And the same with these Andy Goldsworthy pieces, you know, the subject, he's using, you know, value or contrast. So this is the same stick with snow on the background and with a darker background and he peeled the bark off this. So it's a much brighter piece. So he's playing around with the same stick, different backgrounds, high contrast, black and white. Value in space. So during the Renaissance, the word chiaroscuro was coined to describe the device of using light and dark to imply depth and volume. Depth and volume. So atmospheric perspective. This is probably going to be part of our next assignment or that next second half of our assignment. So pay attention to this. I mean, atmospheric perspective is just that when things go away further, they become less in focus, more faded, more fuzzy. The things in the foreground are more clear and crisp. And as you go, as it goes into space or gets further away, it becomes fuzzier, less detail. 
create a, you know, more of a haze that's atmospheric perspective. Um, we also talk about shading. Uh, many visual effects from shading are possible. You can just see that high contrast using a pencil only shading, right? Cross hatching. So it's hard, you know, it's hard to tell without me showing you it right in front of your face, but these are cross hatch. If you just draw straight lines, it's a hatch, but to make an X or cross hatch, you can like create depth or, or by adding different values. So these are all cross hatch, some really thick, close together, some wider, some pressed harder. And that gives you different grace, a different gray scale. A wash drawing, you know, they're using, they're just showing different examples of how to create value and all these. So this is shading, this is cross hatching, this is a wash. So a little watercolor, thin, dark, like if you squinted, you can see like the different variations of bright or light and dark from these different watercolor um, washes. And then using a pencil to create a variety of grays. Um, this is a Surratt's pointillism. So these are all dots dot, 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 over and over and over. So the more close and thick they are, the, the more value, the further apart, the lighter to create a, a, a wide range of grays. Same with this, even with like the, the, or the feeling of like a pixel. And then same thing with here with pattern repeated over and over, some large, some dark, some light. And this is also going to be similar part of our next part of our assignment. So that's, let's move into texture. Texture is defined as the tactile quality of the surface of an object. Texture, how it feels when you touch it. Um, you can represent texture in your drawings or the pencil strokes. Look at the differences in textures of objects around you, right? Actual size or actual texture is the tactile quality of actually of the object. So touching it, it's smooth, it's fuzzy, it's rough. But implied texture is found in artwork that gives the illusion of texture or pattern. Um, so surface character and material can be experienced through touch or the illusion of touch. It's produced, it's produced by natural things or by an artist's manipulation. So if I touch that, it would probably be actually fuzzy. Whereas, and same with these, these would be rough, right? Sight and touch. So why bother? Why add texture? Because artists and you can utilize texture and art to imitate nature very closely. It can also provoke like psychological or motivational responses to stimulate curiosity, shock us, make us reevaluate our perception, right? And just like brush strokes that are really thick in Van Gogh's pieces here. There's four different types of texture, actual, simulated, abstract, and invented. So actual texture is just that, right? You go to touch it, it's fuzzy, it's experienced through touch. Simulated is sort of a copy or like an artist, you know, translation. And you, if you've ever heard this word down here, trump l'oeil, or it, it tricks the eye. So it's made to look real. And then abstract texture is derived from the appearance of an actual surface, but rearranged or simplified by an artist to satisfy some demands of artwork. The best case of this, I think, is like this owl's chest here. Those are just little V pattern, but we understand in our brain that, oh, those are feathers. But real feathers don't look like that. But a texture is created through making pattern. Same with the wood grain, you know. So that's abstracted, still like visual, like I still rep, it's still, uh, I still recognize that bird, but, and bird is feathers, but it's not really realistic. It's abstracted. Whereas this is invented texture um, and they're abstracted or they're, ab they're, they're non-objective. So they don't really like, they don't look like a real thing, but they maybe they convey more of an emotion, um, comes from an imagination, produces a decorative pattern, you know, and it's more painterly. Um, you can create space by using texture. We talked about this earlier. Textures get, can help divine space when blurred or lacking in contrast, like in the background. They can make objects appear distant, where sharp, uh, right up close, it, you know, with strong contrast, it makes them feel closer to you. Textures are bolder and clearer close up, like I just said, and they become blurrier, softer, smoother in the backgrounds. In other words, atmospheric perspective. You know, I'm not going to go over this too much, but pattern is flat. It involves repetition. 
It's not concerned with surface texture, but with appearance, whereas real texture stimulates a tactile response. It can be actual, not just an illusion. Um, it does not simply engage the eye, but also a sense of touch, whether you actually touch it or not. So pattern and repetition, you know, repetition or, you know, anything with rhythm, it's going to create a pattern. And the reason why I'm showing you this quick is it might be important for some of what you're about to do. So you can see like even a pattern like right in here, like that repeated swirly pattern. It's also very similar to the swirly pattern of this, you know, girls, this, this, I don't know, this, the face, this portrait. Um, so repetition of pattern can create some really interesting effects. So let's talk about this assignment. What are we actually going to do? So you're going to explore elements of art, value, and texture, uh, and repetition and pattern, which is a principle of design. So you're going to practice creating scales with even steps of value. So I'm going to give you guys, you know, some paper that kind of looks, uh, well, where is it? There's going to be some blank paper in spaces that look like this, but eventually um, you're going to create scales or steps of value. So imagine right here, light, a little darker, a little darker, a little darker, all the way to black, similar to right here, right? So the assignment, you're going to create a series of seven value scales. The first will be a shaded value scale. So right here, like I said, and this is shaded, using shading. Uh, and then you're going to create six implied texture value scales after that. So the examples below are this. Process on a sheet of paper, which I'm going to give each of you one of these. They're not going to be huge. They're all, all of these are going to fit on one, you know, 9 by 12 or 8.5 by 11. Um, and each of the squares is one inch. And you're going to draw seven frames, right? So actually, I'm setting it up for you. So the first one will be like this. We'll start this right now, dark, medium, light with a pencil. In the following six frames, so you're going to use pencil or pen. So you can use that thin Sharpie I gave you and draw implied texture value scales. The textures are up to you. So you can think creatively. See the examples below, but do not copy them. See how the size marks the space between them to, a, to, an, to affect value. Large, in other words, larger marks create more space. And lighter values with the smaller and tighter they get together create darker values. So this is what we're going to be doing down here. You're going to have six different patterns where you go from light to dark. The original one will be shaded. We'll go on and on. Like always, photograph your drawings from above and submit them to this assignment. This is worth 100 points. Um, so here's some examples of, of texture value scales. Tons of great examples. I want you to be creative with this, even within these little squares, to show me six, you know, seven different looks, seven different, you know, value scales using pattern, texture, repetition to create all these different patterns. And here's some examples of a variety of, you know, explanations or sort of words that describe drawing techniques, pattern. And that's going to be it.